and today we are going to talk about uh, convolutional neural networks and uh, convolutional neural networks are mainly used for uh, uh, in uh, computer vision such as for image classification and object detection they are also used for uh, time series forecasting or time series prediction and today we are going to see how to build conventional neural networks they are also called CNNs for short and what their benefits or advantages are as compared to to the deep neural networks uh, classical deep neural networks why do we need conventional neural network we are going to discuss and also we'll see examples on how to build CNNs using um, Keras in TensorFlow so let's start with this image so here we have a cat uh, it is 8 megapixel resolution and it has about 3200 pixels width and 2500 uh, pixels height and it is colored so that's why we see three RGB like the channels red green blue so in total that means this image this small image it has a oh okay so okay so Oscar just came in so I will start from the beginning okay so we were discussing what the advantages of uh, convolutional neural networks are, what convolutional neural networks are used for, why do we need them in the first place. And on this slide, we are talking if we want to build an image classification model using the classical deep uh, neural networks, uh, the number of parameters, or I mean the number of weights that we have to learn are so huge. So in this cut image, we have about uh, 23 billion weights if we have 100 neurons. So we have the, the input layer and in the first hidden layer, if we have uh, 100 neurons, that means the number of pixels for that image, the, the number, each pixel will be a, a neuron. So in the input layer, uh, so if we have 100 neurons in the first layer, just in the first la layer alone, we have uh, like billions of weights. And if you want to build a model uh, that has to learn this number of weights, one, it, it will be computationally intensive, co costly. Second thing is since we have lots of weights, we will not have enough data to, to avoid overfitting uh, in, in this case. So this is what it looks like like what I showed in the previous slide. So that this cut image in the input layer, we have uh, 224 million input nodes. And if we connect the nodes, each one of them to the 100 neurons in the first hidden layer, uh, it, that gives like uh, billions of weights to learn. And this is computational intensive and it suffers from overfitting. So it is not uh, an optimal way of building a model and using resources. So what is convolutional neural network? Uh, so a convolution is um, an operation that processes groups of nearby pixels. I have an, an animation here that shows this from Andrew's course sometimes that I, I put on my blog. So what here in this image, if you can see the green color is the image and uh, the yellow color is uh, we call it filter or kernel so it is moving across the image and we are doing element wise multiplication multiplying the the pixel values of the image by the corresponding values uh, in the filter so we get a single number uh, we, we multiply them and sum them up so that means we get a single number uh, when uh, when we multiply the green image with the corresponding yellow image in a specific location. So in this case, so we have over this region, we have, so the X here shows the values for the filter. So the filter has values of 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. 
and so this is element wise multiplication and summing them up so this whole rectangle it will give us four so one times one plus one times one two plus one times one three plus one times one for the rest of zeros so we do the same thing so next we are going to move the image this filter move it to the right until we fin until we use all uh, cover all the uh, cells in the image and then we also go down and this is a convoluted feature that means this image in its first uh, hidden layer to say so uh, will be will become this one so it is moving around and getting the values of the element wise multiplication and adding them up and giving us a single number so this is convolution when we say uh, uh, conventional neural networks this is how we do it uh, so what advantages do we see here like let's say this image has uh, 100 pixel by 100 pixel and if we say it is a gray image it doesn't have it like in the third dimension its depth is one so 100 pixel times 100, 100 times 100 if we are to use deep neural network it will be 10,000 uh, way to still learn 10,001 actually with a bias term Whereas if we are using this kind of approach, we have to learn just only nine parameters for this filter plus one the bias, so 10. So from 10,000, we have reduced it to only 10 in this case. So the para the, in this case, as you can see, the, para the weights are shared and they are very few. So it can run very fast and uh, it doesn't also uh, need uh, as much data as a, a classical uh, DNN needs. Uh, okay, so this is what it is doing. The fi the the um, so we have the image and we have that uh, filter. We also call it convolutional kernel, and. Uh, the values that are shown by the subscript are the weights and the weights are shared as we said we just have to learn these values mm. but actually when we are doing uh, conventional neural network we don't use only one filter we use uh, more than one filters so like so one filter may be detecting horizontal edges another filter may be detecting vertical edges another filter may be detecting diagonal edges and so on so we sum them up at the end to, to learn about that image so but like to make simple calculations let's say we have uh, 10 filters for example in this case if we have 10 filters and each filter is 3 by 3 uh, that means our total number of uh, weights to learn will be uh, 3 times 3 which is 9 times 10 uh, uh, 90 and plus uh, bias term so it will be 91 and if we have uh, if it is 3d so the the filter can also be a 3d if the image is 3d and that means if it ha if it is colored image the same thing the number of parameters will be simply uh, 9 times uh, 3 times 10 about 280 281 with the weight so as you can see the billions of weights it has reduced it to about 280 and whether the image is 500 by 500 pixel or 1000 by 1000 pixel it doesn't matter we just have to learn the same uh, number of weights and uh, yeah this is element wise addition as i said and uh, so in convolutional neural network we commonly use multiple kernels as i said and I have an animation here that shows how that is done. So let me make it full screen. So what we see here is, let's say we have in, input volume here. This is the input volume. So it has height, widths, and uh, number of channels. C is number of channels, or we can call it also depth. And let's say we consider two filters, filter one and filter two. So these are the dimensions for the filters and uh, you can see, now let's see how those filters move uh, across the, this input image and they give us the output for the first for the first layer so if i play this 
okay it has a float okay so play it here and then make it full scale so as you can see the at every time it is giving us a single value as it moves as it covers the whole of the image this is the first filter so from the first filter we are getting 2d data from 3d data the second filter also the same way it gives us uh, 2d data from 3d data so in our output volume that is in the first layer we are going to have in the we are going to have the height times width times two because we are considering two filters so this is our uh, our, our output volume that means and uh, yep that is it so let's get back to the pdf and as i said in cnns we use different filters or different kernels and the different kernels learn different things about different attributes about the image it can be detecting horizontal edges vertical edges bright spots diagonal edges or other things and superposition or juxtaposition of uh, all the um, filters will give uh, the final image output so we have this one for example and this is a horizontal this filter it detects horizontal edges and what does it give us so from this it learns this image like it has detected these patterns second one if you consider a ver vertical filter this vertical filter it will detect uh, vertical edges and then so the output volume will be the sum of this one and the previous one so when we sum them up from the two filters alone we have learned it from the input image in our output image we have learned this pattern so and also as we increase the number of layers more detailed kind of patterns are learned the main the main um, uh, patterns like edges vertical and horizontal edges and so on are uh, quickly learned in the first or second uh, layers but as we increase the number of layers then they learn it they learn more detailed uh, attributes of the image so this one what it shows is cnns can learn a hierarchy of features as i said even if this is very complex very complicated images in the different layers the different uh, filters they can learn uh, various attributes of the image so this is a quiz was the process of sliding a kernel or a, a filter across an image called so convolution confusion metrics contortion and curve detection yeah yeah so this is convolution like in the as i showed in the 3d in this one now we are doing convolution when we move the filter um, across the input uh, volume and get corresponding values so we are convolving the image and getting a, a convol convoluted uh, image output and this is a repetition convolutional layers are collections of filters so in this image for example this uh, one where this tries to detect the um, the famous iris data set classifies the iris data set and here we have two convolutional layers with two kernels one of them detects brightness the other one uh, detects uh, age so some of the two will be the output uh, the output convoluted image and like to get the dimensions of the output like for example this one since it is colored we have three channels or the depth is three and it is 300 by 300 so to get the output what we do is uh, simply input minus uh, the cur the filter size plus one so this is 300 by 300 but what we are getting here is 296 by 296 so we can in that case to get this the filter must be uh, five times five so 300 minus five 295 plus one uh, 296 and this the depth of the filters must be the same as the depth of the input uh, image like so in this case 
the, the depth here for each filter should be three because we will we have three channels here and next let's talk about uh, padding and stride what they are and what their purpose is so in here we said uh, we have five by five uh, kernels that like if you want to compress the data we can use uh, what is called stride uh, no start this with padding okay padding let's start first padding so padding preserves the shape of the input after the convolution so we say the shape if if there is no stride the, sh the, sh the size of the output will be input size minus uh, kernel size plus one so that means the size is reducing if we don't want to reduce the size we pad the input image with zeros so we pad it around we put zeros around uh, the original image that means and in this case the output image and the input image will have uh, the same size and in uh, keras there is a function for implementing that so here uh, padding is equal to same so in tensor, tensorflow we can use keras using tf.keras the keras api to build a conventional neural network to layer conventional neural network so we are adding a, a layer in this case tf.keras.layers.conv2d so filters uh, how many filters do we want let's say 10 number of filters and kernel size or the filter size so if we say three that means we use a uh, rectangular i mean the, the height and width of the filters are the same so if we say three it means it is three times three and uh, its depth will be the same as the uh, input the the input data so that will be inferred from that and for the padding we just specify padding equals to same there are two options i guess padding equals to same gives the same shape for the input and output but if we put Pad is equal, padding is equal to valid it uses uh, like the approach we discussed it before so next is the stride stride helps to reduce uh, the size of the data so it reduces uh, the dimension it is like a dimensionality reduction and the total of parameters so it reduces computational time as well so before we were just moving by one pixel but we can move by two pixels so in that case the stride will be two or by three pixels and so on so this is stride and why do we use stride like we are uh, we are we can use stride uh, if you want to learn only the main to compress the image and learn main uh, patterns like main edges or main brightness bright areas in the image uh, here I have another quiz. What does the green part of the diagram below represent? So we have the green part and we have the yellow part. And the green part is the image, whereas the yellow part is uh, the kernel of the, the filter that we discussed. It. So this is the green part is the original image, whereas the yellow part is uh, the kernel convolving the image and another question what is the size of the stride step in the diagram below so what is a stride we have discussed uh, what stride is the initial images we discussed we showed using a stride of one and then we discussed what stride is and we said we use it like for Im compressing image and reducing number of parameters and uh, saving computational time but in this case, the question is, what is the number of stridus? So what we can do is, the original image is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 by 5, whereas the output is 3 by 3. So that means uh, if we don't know the stride, uh, mm, yeah, so if we try 1, for example, 3, 5, minus 3 plus 1 uh, will be 3 so the stride in this case is 1 actually if we try 1 but there is a formula also to get the number of uh, the, the output side the size based on the based on the stride and it is given by uh, 
uh, input image minus uh, minus uh, the the kernel over the stride plus one you can google it if you are interested next is pulling layers so we have discussed about uh, convolutional layers now let's discuss about pulling layers uh, so what is pulling also this is a technique that reduces the dimensionality so if we have this two by two pulling layer for example what it does is if we are considering max pulling that means for this uh, cell for this part the grid it takes the maximum value of it so from here the maximum one is six from this part the maximum one is eight from this part the maximum is three from this part the maximum is four so the the pulling layer gives us this output uh, six eight three four the maximum values from uh, from the filter as it moves across the input data you can see here what max pulling is doing so we have an original image here and what it is doing is we are using uh, max pulling with size of two and stride of two so we have a compressed image but it has detected the main the bright uh, parts of the image or the edges as you can see so dimensionality is decreased by a factor of two both horizontally and vertically in this case because we have this we have we are using stride of two and uh, max pulling but when so when we use a convolutional neural network it is not only the layers are not only convolutions it is some of the convolutions and also we have pulling layers intermediate pulling layers that almost always from what i have seen the out the final the final layers they become fully connected like the dnns so what we do is first we do convolution then pulling convolution pulling convolution pulling and so on then at the end we flatten the input data and that means once we flatten the input data we are going to pass it to a fully connected uh, uh, dnn so this is the full uh, architecture of uh, SNM model. And in TensorFlow, how do we add max pooling layer? So using the Keras layers API, we have max pooling 2D. So we can pass to that the pool size and the strides we want. So as you can see, even if mathematically it looks uh, complicated or at least not easy to implement all the things that we have discussed with uh, tensorflow and keras using conventional neural networks is just very easy once you understand the concept it is only passing some parameters to those uh, functions and we have another quiz here uh, what do the smaller red numbers represent in the image you have seen before so we have seen this image before so the, uh, the the subscript values here are like the waiters so this is part of an image and uh, I mean this filter we are going to convolve it over an image and these are the, the waiters for that filter and we don't we don't manually specify the values of um, the filter so it, it has to the model itself it learns for example if we ask it to use 10 filters it it learns using back propagation it learns the corresponding uh, weights for each filter so these are the weights and the other question is following on from the previous question what is the value of the output that the kernel will generate for this part of the image so it is simply multiplying the, the pixel value of the image by the corresponding filter values and just doing the element or just adding them up. So in here, one times one, one, then these are zero. We have also one times one, two, one times one, three, and another one times one, four. So this should be four. And now let's see how to how to implement CNNs from end to end. 
so as we said once we add a, co a couple of convolutional layers i mean like convolutional layer pulling layer convolutional layer and pulling layer and so on at the end we have to use fully connected dna for classification and based on the kind of problem people have used different number of uh, layers like for the convolutional and pulling layers and they are available online there are, there are different architectures that you can check and when people build dnns they usually check for the literature and see which kinds of architectures work for what kind of problems rather than starting from scratch and uh, so let's see this function for example what it is doing so here we are passing some parameters and first we start the model we instantiate it using tf.keras.models sequential so we are calling it sequential because we are sequentially adding layers like the conventional layer pulling layer and so on so now we have instantiated a model then after that we just add layers model.add as you can see model.add then here we are adding tf.keras layers we start with the input layer so uh, input layer should come first and we specify the shape of the input layer so in here the input layer it is high times times width times one as you can see and we give it an image a name uh, this one helps us like for visualizing uh, the number of parameters in each layer if we name them and then we can add a convolutional layer so when we add convolutional layer we add the number of filters this number of filters are the number of kernels so n fill one is for example is, 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 is this case something that is being passed from each parameter so we specify number of filters and its size k size one is the size for the first uh, uh, I mean, yeah for the first conventional layer for the, the size of the filters so this is a square basically and the padding we can specify the padding whether to make it same or valid and activation we can pass different activation functions the different activation functions we saw before so we have added one conventional layer from this in this uh, line we instantiate the model in this line we specified the input shape in this line and we added first conventional layer in this line now we want to do max pooling next so the same thing simply model dot add tf keras layers max pooling 2d then the pulling size and the number of strides and so on so we have added another uh, another conventional layer here and another uh, max pulling the same thing then one is we have added the number of conventional and max pulling layers uh, that we want we have to flatten the output data so we flatten it so the we are flattening it here because we want to pass it to the classical fully connected DNA. So once we flatten it, simply add. Here we are adding a dropout. As we as you remember last time, we are, dropout is is uh, emitted for um, uh, controlling uh, overfitting in DNNs or regularization technique. So we are specifying the rate here. D probe here is the percentage of the percentage of the the connections or the the neurons to drop so once we add drop out we are we are adding a dense layer now so this in here it was conv to the layer but this is the dense layer the dense layer is a uh, dnn deep neural network so in that we are specifying the units and the activation and finally this is for image classification so we add a final dense layer and for that final dense layer we are specifying number of classes n classes and if the number of classes is uh, not binary if we have more than two classes the output the activation for the last layer we use is the softmax softmax is used for uh, multi-class classification so now finally we return the model
so it is this easy now let's see a, a real world example so hmm didn't have here so if i go to github google data analyst and uh, okay open with this one So if you go to courses, machine learning, deep dive, image keras, and like MNIST for example, if we see the MNIST data, MNIST is like, uh, they are images, MNIST, handwritten images. So let's build a, a CNN model that identifies this uh, handwritten images. And... Um, I think it is here trainer the model is here so we were trying different models linear model dnn model dnn with drop out cnn model and yeah cnn model is our last one so let's see how the, C the cnn model is being implemented so from the h parameters if this is to be passed from uh, uh, some other external function so it gets the parameters the kernel size we are using two two layers here we are adding two convolutional layers so that is why we have two uh, sizes for the kernel and we have the number of filters also in field and drop out drop out percentage so in this case we are dropping out 25 percent of the the nodes so we instantiate the model using tfkras model sequential then we specify the input image so our our uh, data is uh, gray color so that is why this is one as you can see his height times height with this and one and the shape in our case the shape is 28 uh, it depends on we have to understand the input the image so this is 28 20 times 28 times 1 so this is a batch size so we don't need to specify this we just need to specify the height width is and number of channels so now we have specified the, um, the input layer we have added the input layer to the model we continue adding the convolutional layer so we specify the number of filters and fill one and what should their size be k okay, size one padding what kind of padding do we need do we need to uh, if we don't need padding we just the default is i think the valid one but if we want to make the input layer layer and output layer to have the same size we we use padding equal to same because especially when if we want to increase more layers and if we don't make the padding if we don't add padding then our image will compress very quickly so that's why people came up with the solution and we are specifying the activation Next, we are doing max pooling. So for max pooling, we are specifying the uh, pooling size and strides. And we next we added conversional layer, another conversional layer, the same as the first one. I mean, with the corresponding number of filters, kernel size, and padding activation. These are things that we can. They should not necessarily be the same as the first one. The, and uh, we have final max pooling and once we have the output from this layer the output from this layer we are flattening it to pass it to to pass it to our dnn model and once we have this flattened data if if we want to drop out we have this another this we are adding the drop out uh, okay yeah and also there is what is called batch normalization so we discussed last time normalization helps us for uh, for the, like the gradient descent to converge quickly and there is also batch normalization in uh, neural networks so batch normalization is the output from uh, the previous layer whether to normalize it or not in the current layer and the people have found that normalizing uh, the output even in a hidden layer helps 
for model performance and convergence. So if we want to, if, if, if batch normalization is true, we are adding here batch normalization basically. So it is easy to add batch normalization just by using this function. So once we do batch normalization, we are adding the dropout layer. Actually, dropout is not a layer by itself, like we are dropping out the nodes and uh, from this dense layer. So from the previous dense layer, yeah, from this dense layer. So and uh, finally we have since we have multi class, it is from zero to nine. The images are it is ten. Uh, it has ten classes. So we specify number of classes. As I say, the activations should be softmax, and it returns probability. So that is why we call it probability. And when we run this, we can see the number of the number of weights or the number of parameters that it is learning in each layer and the total number of parameters from the model summary. So this is how we build uh, CNN with TensorFlow in Keras. If you have any questions, this, this all feels very. Uh... Recipe -like. Yeah, I mean, if you so if you if you want to build it from scratch, like in one of uh, Andrew's course, there is an online course, and we built it from scratch, and it, it it is lots of it is lots of course, lots of code, but with TensorFlow and Keras, it is very very nice, very handy. It, quick, you can quickly implement it once you understand what is what. So, as I said, uh, convolutional neural networks are used mainly for computer vision, like for image classification and object detection. Like object detection is classifying an image and also detecting where exactly it is. Like not only telling whether it is a cat or dog or a dog, but also knowing where that cat is relative to that dog or where exactly is that in our location this this is especially useful like for for applications that have special component like self-driving cars but also in addition to computer vision uh, conventional neural network is also uh, being used for uh, time series it is called conv 1d not 2d like it is smoothing for the time series data, you do some smoothing and that the smoothed uh, data, you pass it as input to the next layer basically. And in some cases, even it, uh, it beats uh, RNNs, like RNNs are uh, built for sequence data, like where, for example, t I mean, time series is one sequence uh, data, but uh, convolutional uh, neural network, sometimes it beats uh, are NNs as well. So if you are if you are working on something that has time component to it or the sequence, uh, try both of them and you may get that your uh, CNN outperforms your RNN model.